most of the papers really date from around 1973 and then take you through pretty much to the, uh, to, to the present time, to more recent times. Advocacy, which I guess I've been involved in for so long, uh, when it started, it was amateur time. We were trying things out and so on. Now it's become a serious discipline. If anything, it's become a serious academic discipline. We know so much more about what needs to be done. And whereas in the earlier days, universities were just places where the scientific research was done, demonstrating the harms and so on, now they're places from which a lot of the serious campaigning is based, the evidence policy-related research is being done. It didn't happen in those earlier days. Useful work to show how we can influence governments and demonstrate research that will demonstrate to governments the importance of what they can achieve. But overall, it gives you a pretty comprehensive journey through nearly 50 years of advocacy in health and social areas with a particular focus on tobacco. And why is tobacco important? Because first, it's our largest preventable cause of death and disease. But second, tobacco advocacy is seen as a model for advocacy in so many other areas. So I hope people will get a picture from this that it's never easy. You get as many losses as you get wins, but you can get progress if you stay with it. What you also see is the importance of coalitions and amazing colleagues. Nobody can do this sort of work in isolation. And in the UK, we had terrific coalitions and I was involved in those in tobacco, in alcohol, in public health more broadly. Uh, here in Australia, particularly in WA, we've had fabulous coalitions. And you also see the politicians who had the courage to act. I hope that this will be useful, of course, to people working on tobacco and on the history of tobacco and tobacco advocacy, but also simply to people working on public health and on advocacy and on how to make a difference, especially when you're up against tough opposition. So I hope it'll give some help to some of those people. It'll show them what some of the obstacles are, but it'll also show them that you can make progress. When people look back in 50 years' time, there'll be absolute incredulity that we had to battle so hard to prevent something that even now is killing 8 million people around the world each year. Absolutely preventable. And I guess what this collection is about is how you can work, even as individuals, as small organisations and as academics, the contribution you can make to saving lives millions at a time. I hope that people will be able to add to this. Uh, there should be a lot of material, not just in Western Australia, but nationally. Uh, there's more material that I'm aware of. There's some that's archived in the UK, and I think it would be great if we could get that added in as well. So yes, I think, I think uh, you know, there isn't really a good elsewhere in Australia that I'm aware of. There isn't really a, a, a good collection uh, that gives you this sort of progress through this form of public health advocacy. So it's terrific that it's being established here and I hope that we can keep adding to it.